In the last two lectures, we have learned how to create and add data in a database using HTTP POST request and how to fetch data from the database using HTTP GET request. Now, in this lecture, we are going to learn how to delete data from the database using HTTP DELETE request. Before that, in this UI, I have made some changes. So basically, I have moved this fetch product button here and then for each of these products, I have added this DELETE button. Then we also have this CLEAR product button. Now what we want is when this delete button is clicked, we want to delete that respective product from the database. And when this clear product button is clicked, we want to delete all the products from the database. So from this Firebase database. Also, let me open developer console here. Let's clear everything and let's click on this fetch product button. And here you can see an array has been logged and if I expand this array, each element here represents a product which we have in this database. Okay. And if I expand one of these products, you will notice that this product has this price property, this P name property, this description property, and it also has this ID property. And to this ID property, we are assigning a string value. And this value is nothing but this value which you see here. So here we have opened the first product and for that in the database, this is the folder name and that folder name we have assigned it as an ID to this product. And using this ID, we are going to delete that product from the database. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and let's implement the delete functionality for these buttons. So whenever any one of this delete button is clicked, we want to delete that respective product from the database. Let's go ahead and let's implement that functionality. So here we have this button element and this button element is used to display these delete buttons in the web page. So on that button element, let's go ahead and let's bind click event. And to that, let's assign a method and let's call it on delete product. Now here what we want is we want to delete a product based on its ID. So here we are looping over all the products in this all products array and for each iteration we are getting a product object and we are storing it in, in this prod variable. So this is going to be an object, a product object and it is going to have an ID property and we want to pass that ID to this on delete product method. Now let's go ahead and let's create this method in app component class. So here I will create this method and this method is going to have a parameter. Let's again call it ID, which is going to be of type string. And from within this method, we want to make a delete request for that. On the HTTP client object, we have a delete method. So we are storing that HTTP client in this HTTP property. So let's copy this property. And here, let's access it using this variable. And on this, we can call this delete method. And this delete method is used to make a delete request. And if you notice, this delete method has one required parameter, which is the URL. So for the URL, let's go ahead and let's copy this URL and let's pass it to this delete method. So this is the only required ar argument here for this delete method. Now at this URL, at this products.json, we are storing all our products. But here we don't want to delete all the products. We want to delete only that product which matches this ID. So again, let's go to Firebase database here and let's click on one of the products. So let's click on this product. I will open it in a new tab. And let's check the URL of this product. So for that, let's click on this edit button here. So it is basically slash products slash this ID. Okay. So to this URL, we need to use a slash and then products and then a slash and this ID. So here, let's go to VS code 
and from here let's remove this json and let's use a slash and then let's use the id value and also remember that after this id we need to append dot json this is important so this will be the complete url for the product which we want to delete all right now this delete method is again going to return an observable so all, we also need to subscribe to that observable now here in the subscribe method we don't want to do anything so we don't need to pass any callback function here with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's go to our angular application let me close this developer console and currently in this database we have five products right and the first product here is iphone now let's go ahead and let's try to delete that iphone so let's click on this delete button and now let's go to our database and here you will notice that now we only have four products so that iphone product has been deleted from the database okay if i go ahead and delete this acer laptop so here this last product is this acer laptop so if i go ahead and delete that and if we go to the database you will notice that that product has been deleted from here so now we only have three products so this is how you can delete a product from the database now if you want to delete all the products from the database then in that case you need not to pass the id so let's go ahead and let's implement the functionality for this clear product button okay for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this method all right let's paste it here and let's call it on delete all products and here we don't need this id because we simply want to delete all the products and from here also let's remove this part and here we need to append dot json to this url and now here we have this clear product button on this let's go ahead and let's bind click event and to this click event let's assign this method let's save the changes let's go to the web page so now we are only left with three products in our database right now if i click on this clear products button and if you go to the database you will notice that all the products have been deleted from this database so now there is no products available and if i refresh the page you will notice that now this table is empty now if there is no product in the database let's say we want to display no products available so here i am going to create a new tr element inside that let's have a td and on this td let's specify a call span so basically in this table we have total five columns so we want to make this td span over those five columns and inside this td let's say no products available now we only want to display this so this tr element when there is no products in the database that means when this all products is empty so here on this tr element let's use ng if directive and to this let's assign a condition and the condition here is if this all products if its length is less than one in that case only we want to display this okay with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page so currently it is displaying no products available now let's go ahead and let's add a product okay let's click on this add product button so that product has been added here let's fetch that product from the database using this fetch product button so that product is being displayed here and when there is a product that no product available message is not displayed here now here fetching the data from database is taking some time that time is of course in fraction of second but let's say by the time the data is loading we want to show a loading indicator 
let's see how we can do that so for that here let's first go to app component class and here let's create a property and let's call this property is fetching it is going to be of type boolean and initially let's assign it with the value false and when the fetching of data starts so basically here in this method we are fetching the data so when the fetching of data from the database starts at that time we want to set this is fetching to true and when the fetching of data is complete there we want to set this is fetching to false so here let's say this dot is fetching equals false right this callback function will be called when the observable has returned the data when it has returned the response and in that case the fetching of data is complete so when the fetching of data is complete we want to set this is fetching to false now let's go to app component.html and here we want to display this message no products available when the all products array length is less than one and also when we are not fetching the data from the database so here let's also include the end operator and we also want to add this condition is fetching should be false that means when the data is fetching when we are fetching the data from the database at that time we don't want to display this message then let's also go ahead and let's create one more tr element and here we want to show this loading indicator so something like this now we want to show this when the data is still fetching so here in the ng if i simply want to use this is fetching property with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and if i reload the page you will notice that for some time it is showing loading and when the data is completely loaded it is showing that data so in this way you can also show a loading indicator this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day